The face ages uh, through a number of factors, certainly the hereditary or genetic ones and the environmental ones. Uh, and that's why we look different than somebody of a different background or from a different family of the same age. So in other words, uh, if your mom developed uh, jowls or saggy jaw lines or baggy eyelids at, at 50 and, and dad had a sort of a droopy neck or chin at 65, that's why we're going to see some of those changes at the same time, essentially. Now, it doesn't, matter, we, doesn't mean that we're going to age exactly like our parents, but a lot of that predestined hereditary component uh, dictates the way uh, our face and our soft tissues will age, essentially, with time. And that's also contributed to by what we do to our tissues. So in other words, if we're smokers um, and we, let's say, ex like sun exposure or do a lot of vacation trips to hot spots and aren't protecting our skin well, we'll see damage uh, from those components as well. Those are the environmental factors. And we see that smoking, it's well documented, affects uh, the elastin and the tissue makeup and skin, as does ultraviolet sun exposure, which uh, the radiation breaks down elastin and we tend to get looser skin because of those processes uh, that tends to make us look more prematurely aged if we've had a lot of exposure to either of those environmental factors. Now one of the other things that we think about is that the age, the age of the face or how the face ages isn't really linear. Now that's important because a lot of us think that as each year goes by we look that much older and that's not true and when you think about friends of yours that you may not have seen for five years you might look at them and realize that they haven't changed much, but then you know another year might go by and they might look like they've changed quite a bit. And that's because the aging process isn't linear. So we go through these plateaus where we tend to, tend to stay relatively static, but then the soft tissues just tend to give. And then we look like we age a little bit more and we get that change and then we go static on a plateau again. So that's important when we're thinking about corrections uh, and doing surgery or procedures because we are working with a, a structure of the face that tends to be aging in a non-linear fashion and in a progressive way. Uh, another important thing, uh, point to, to factor in is that when we're young we have uh, what we call the triangle of youth. And the triangle of youth basically suggests that when we're young we have a lot of volume and, and good healthy tissues. And that means that we've got lots of fat up in our cheekbone areas, we've uh, got sort of narrow and, and sculpted cheeks, we've got a sculpted jawline, we don't have jowls, and, and that all tapers down like a triangle to a refined chin point. Well, as we age, we get what we call the inverted triangle of youth, where as the aging process happens, we get collapse of the cheek fat pads down into the mid face, the jowls fall down on the jawline, and we get heaviness within the folds of the, of the face, which basically makes us look like we've got this heaviness within the central triangle, which is now pointing upwards rather than down, with a widened jawline. And that's called the inverted triangle of youth, and that factors into what we would do to correct it or what options we have for correcting because we're really trying to reverse that process. So how the face ages sort of biologically is we get a loss of tissue integrity, we get sort of breakdown of a lot of the matrix proteins that allow the ligaments of the face to start to relax, we get a substantial loss of fat volume within the fat pads, uh, and believe it or not we even get resorption of the bone itself. So in other words the actual bony skeleton starts to get smaller. So all of these changes tend to occur simultaneously and they, they have dramatic changes on what we see visibly in the face. So one of the things that we'll see typically going from top to bottom is that we'll notice that some of the wrinkles that we used to be able to see as we sort of raise up the eyebrows as I'm doing now, that you know when you didn't have to raise your eyebrows to sort of see clearly or your eyebrows weren't heavy, were sort of stat or dynamic wrinkles. In other words, they were ones that came when you lifted your eyebrows. But now as we start to lift them on a more regular basis, just because our tissues are stretching, our skin stretching, we're trying to activate our muscles to lift the brows, we get these static or fixed wrinkles in the brows, or these fixed furrows or, or lines uh, in between our eyebrows. And these are really important because they're areas that people really want to have addressed. Areas where we see volume loss is in the temples and the cheeks. We start to look a little bit more hollow through the cheeks and heavy through the midface, and we'll see loss of volume in the temples. Uh, we tend to see a little bit more of the boniness of the face, uh, less fullness and covering. Uh, and we'll also see that because there's this descent, and we've talked about that, where the face starts to collapse down a little bit on itself and create this inverted triangle, we start to see change in the position of the fat pads because the ligaments, almost like little guy wires holding the fat pads in the positions, are also starting to stretch out. All those tissues are starting to attenuate. Around the eyes, we see more wrinkling with the uh, permanent wrinkles around the eyes, and we see more bulging of the fat pads that cushion the eye, which gives us these bulges around the eye that we often see. And 
and we try to address and and that's because the little structures like a little fascial structure we call it fascia in there that holds the fat pads in the eye socket tends to bulge and allow that eye to look sort of a, a little bit more atypical in its shape and then again with that normal descent and relaxation we see the sort of the heaviness in the jawline and the loss of the angularity of the face. Now these processes tend to happen over a number of years so in our 20s we start to see the changes of the wrinkles, the early wrinkles that are just starting to start at the very end of our 20s. Once we get into our 30s they often become a little bit more static or more fixed uh, near the end of our 30s, early 40s. Once we get into our 40s we're starting to see some of that atrophic or loss of some of that volume as we get to mid to later 40s, early 50s. And once we're in the 50s, we're starting to see that descent where the fat pads start to fall. We see more angulate, or, or so we lose the angulation of the jaw, get more squareness. And we also tend to see some of the, the banding or the, the looseness of the skin and neck as we transition from our, let's say, 50s into our 60s and 70s. So there's this progressive change in the face and it's important to know that at each stage different things can be done to address it and try to stabilize that process and, and sort of reverse a little bit of that aging and make us look a little bit younger at each point. But sometimes once a significant amount of progress has happened, we have to use a combination of treatments to try to reverse that. Well, there are a number of treatments that are available for us to reverse facial aging processes. and. The reality is we can never completely reverse it, we can just slow the process down. Because remember that aging is going to happen no matter what goes on, there's no way to actually stop that. No one's really found the fountain of youth. So the reality is we're going to continue to age. What we want to do is conceal that a little bit or soften it and let it happen more slowly. So initially, uh, certainly in our uh, late 20s or our 30s, we consider using things like Botox to sort of use a little bit of uh, periorbital, let's say muscle paralysis, to, to really sort of soften those wrinkles to avoid those dynamic wrinkles from being static ones. Um, and eventually we will get those static wrinkles. We might think about having minor amounts of fillers or sort of softening agents put into it to adjust that for more permanent corrections. We might even think about uh, fat grafting into those areas. Uh, in addition, as our skin starts to loosen, we can think about using either peels or getting laser surgery or laser treatments done. And laser itself uh, as a resurfacing agent, which tends to sort of burn just in a very micro way, a very surface edge of the skin, uh, and allow the skin to rejuvenate itself is invaluable in tightening the skin, uh, but only to a lesser degree uh, because it won't reverse some of the more profound changes of advanced aging. So as we continue to age uh, through the process, eventually we get to a stage where we notice that a lot of these changes are much more that can then can be addressed by these minor procedures when we're considering doing more permanent corrections. And we need to think about using something like uh, corrective cosmetic plastic surgery to really reshape our face uh, and really try to reverse uh, those aging processes in, in a much more profound and effective way.